Hello everyone, uh, my name is Samir Zaman and my topic is the role of readout segmented ecoplanar that is resolved DWI in the diagnosis of CSOM. Uh, I am from the Department of Radio Diagnosis from the college uh, Diva Parl with Jepit. So the aim of my study is to evaluate the role of readout segmented uh, EPA that is RECP, also known as the Resolve Readout Segmentation of Long Variable Eco Trains, which is a type of multi shot EPI TWI sequence in detecting the presence of chronic separative otitis media. So we'll start with the introduction. Uh, the disorders of mid middle ear are common in Indian population and they cause otoria, hearing impairment, ear pain, discharge, and most common is CSOM. It uh, presents with the various complications like mastoid abscess, labyrinthitis, facial nerve paralysis, and uh, thrombophlebitis, and most common is cholecystoma. Uh, cholecystoma is characterized by accumulation of keratin debris in the middle ear or other pneumatized areas of the temporal bone. It's locally aggressive, and hence it is very important to diagnose uh, the extent and the presence of cholecystoma in patients of uh, CSOM. Uh, uh, high resolution CT that that is HRCT is a is a very well known to be the first modality of choice for cholesteatoma for uh, detecting the presence of soft tissue density and extent and presence of bony erosion, but it cannot differentiate between uh, cholesteatoma and uh, inflammatory inflammatory or granulation tissue or scar tissue. So DWI is an MR sequence used for that, which uh, uh, it uses the te technique of Brownian motion to create an image. The water molecules are always not freely uh, flowing, but sometimes face restric restriction, which results in high signal intensity. That's, that is diffusion restriction. So it appears hyper intense on DWA. However, granulation tissue will not appear hyper intense on DWA as water molecules are more mobile. So it differentiates. Uh, cholesteatoma between inflammatory uh, granulation tissue and scar tissue. So these are uh, the types of uh, DWI, that is single shot EPI, non-EPI, and the one we are using is uh, multi-shot EPI, that is resolved. So single shot EPI is a single shot uh, of uh, DWI applied. Uh, Non-EPI also uses single shot. However, multi-shot uses uh, multiple shots of DWI, uh, diffusion restriction. Uh, and then because of multi-shot, there is the scan time is more and the, it is sensitive to motion artifact. However, the resolution is very good and it can differentiate uh, culture tumors of uh, two to three mm size. And multi-shot EPI is a type, uh, is a uh, enhancement and a better version of single shot EPA and uses that technique. Non EPA is uh, most commonly used uh, for cholesterol nowadays, but we have done the study to study about a multi shot EPA in detecting cholesterol. So our sample size is 30, and uh, it, the cases were taken between September 2019 and uh, July 2021. So the sequences used are T1, T2, axial and coronal plane, T2FS, resolved DWI in axial plane, and 3D cis sequence. So these are the uh, observation and results. The demography which we had uh, were 13 patients who were pediatric age group, uh, 17 patients were adults. And amongst the pediatric age group of 13 patients, seven were male and six were female. And out of the uh, 17 adults, nine were male and eight were female. And the clinical features were that 39% had otalgia, 91% had uh, discharge, 22% had associated bleeding, 48% had hearing loss, 39% had perforation, and 30% had reduction uh, pockets on otoscopy examination. These are the MRI findings. Uh, we, we saw a diffusion restriction in 28 patients, uh, semicircular canal invasion in two patients. There was no uh, CVST, unfortunately, and uh, EAC involvement uh, was seen in five patients. 
and bilateral cholesteatoma was seen in four patients, and unilateral cholesteatoma was seen in 24 patients, and no cholesteatoma was seen in two patients. So we seeing bilateral cholesteatoma, we had considered uh, two temporal bone studies of each patient. So there were 60 studies in total. And out of the 60 studies, 32 uh, temporal bones showed cholesteatoma. So uh, these are the findings. Uh, this is the chart I made. Uh, the number of temporal bones, uh, as we are considering that each patient has two temporal bones, so the number of temporal bones showing division restriction on MRI and with positive intra-op and HP findings were 32, that is true positive. So the number of temporal bones showing division restriction on MRI, but uh, were negative on intra-op and HP findings were one. The number of temporal bones not showing diffusion restriction on MRI, but uh, having a positive HP report and interrupt findings was, was one, that is a false negative. And number of temporal bones uh, not showing diffusion restriction and also uh, negative on uh, interrupt findings were 26, that is two negative. So the sensitivity was 97%, specificity was 96%, Positive predictive value was 97%, negative predictive value was 96%, and accuracy was 97%. So these are some cases. Uh, this is a one case had a large cholesteatoma in the left middle ear, which appeared predominantly hypointense on uh, T1 video image uh, with a few hyperintense foci, uh, predominantly hyperintense on T2 axial and uh, showing diffusion restriction and low EDC values. And it was seen that it was the soft tissue was extending into the eustachian tube. And in this case, uh, we see there's a, a soft tissue lesion in the right uh, middle ear. These are axial images. In T1, it appears hypointense, measuring 5 mm. The corresponding size on T2 also appearing hyperintense and showing diffusion restriction and low EDC values. So this uh, was the smallest cholesteatoma we detected, uh, that is 5 mm. However, Rizal can detect uh, cholesteatomas of 2 to 3 mm. So this is another case uh, which we see a soft tissue density, a soft tissue lesion, which appeared as a soft tissue density on CT. So cholesteatoma was one uh, cause. However, MRI showed a uh, soft tissue uh, lesion in the left middle ear, which uh, 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 showed hyperintensity on T2, uh, showed diffusion restriction in low EDC values. And uh, on intra findings, it would turn out to be malignant otitis externa with a mastoid abscess. So this was a uh, false positive. This is another case which uh, had uh, findings of CSM, clinical findings of CSM. However, on MRI, uh, there was no uh, soft tissue lesion in the middle ear and there was no uh, diffusion restriction on low EDC values. However, uh, as this was a case of a modified radical mastectomy, mastectomy on the left middle ear, uh, there were recurrent symptoms of CSM and, and hence uh, second look surgery was performed. And it was found that there was a uh, cholesteatoma in the left middle ear. So this is a false negative. So we come to discussion. Uh, CSM is a uh, sequelae of acute infection with the tympanic membrane uh, perforation. Uh, one of the complications of it is uh, a presence as granulation tissue, but sometimes uh, squamous epithelium may generate uh, and in initiate a cholesteatoma formation, which is the commonest com uh, complication. Uh, as we have seen that CT is best known for uh, detecting cholesteatoma, DWI MRI is also used to, uh, is used to differentiate between inflammatory and granulation tissue from scar tissue. Uh, inflammatory granulation tissue, sorry, inflammatory granulation tissue and scar tissue from cholesterol. 
So we see we have seen that the technique relies on running in motion and that uh, a polystatoma consists of keratin, keratin debris, which shows diffusion restriction. However, uh, granulation tissue and scar tissue does not show. In our study sample of 30 patients uh, who presented with signs and symptoms of CSOM, 20 patients showed a lesion exhibiting uh, diffusion restriction in the left middle layer. Uh, and were correlated with interop and HP findings, which had confirmed 29 cases in the sample. These lesions in all cases predominantly appeared ISO2 hypointense on T1 and hyperintense on T2, showing diffusion restriction low VDC values. Multiple degrees of diffusion weighted imaging was, were applied, that is, P value of 0, 100, 800, and 1000, and cholecytoma was best seen on B1000 uh, in 17 patients. There was bilateral cholecytoma. Uh, in few patients and individual temporal bones were assessed of each patient, which uh, hence the sample size was 60. As the sample size uh, originally was 30, each patient con uh, consisting of uh, two temporal bones. So the sam final sample size was 60. And 32 positive temporal bones truly showed a cholesterol that's true positive. 26 temporal bones truly showed uh, absence of cholesterol that is true negative while one temporal bone was falsely positive, which turned out to be a mastoid axis. And finally, one cholesterol could not be detected, which was seen in drop and HP on HP, which was a false negative case. So with regard to DWI, non-EPI sequences have been the go-to detecting uh, small cholesterol and recurrences with its good signal to noise ratio and absence of skull-based artifacts. However, in this study, we evaluate uh, how multi-shot DWI and resolved DWI fares against non-EPI sequences and single-shot DWI sequences. So we uh, compared our study with uh, two uh, established studies. Uh, one was by Dudao et al., which uh, compared resolved DWI uh, with non-EPI. And another was by uh, Yamashita et al., uh, which compared multi-shot DWI with single shot uh, EPI DWI. So Dudao et al had the findings of pro a positive predictive value of 93% result and negative predictive value of 70%. Whereas uh, in a study, non-EPI had the uh, positive predictive, predictive value of 92.5% and negative predictive value of 80%. In our study, we got a uh, positive predictive value of 97% and negative uh, predictive value of 96%. So it fared well uh, in comparison to non-EPA. And in Yamashita, you know, uh, we got findings of sensitive, sensitivity of uh, 97%, uh, whereas the multi-shot had 76%, and single shot in this, we had 46%, which was very low. Uh, specificity was 96% in uh, our study, 100% in multi-shot in their study, and 100% single shot in their study, which is comparative to our study. And the accuracy was 97%, whereas in multi-shot in their study had 87.9%, and single shot had 72.4%. So resolved DWI in detecting colchitoma in our study showed a sensitivity of 97%, specificity of 96%, positive predictive value of 97%, negative predictive value of 96%, and accuracy of 97%. Few limitation in our study were sample size was limited, and inter-study comparison between other uh, DWI sequences was not done. As compared to the studies of Dudao et al. and Yamashita et al., Resolved DWI holds as a strong DWI technique in the diagnosis of cholesterol comparable with non-EPI sequence and comparatively better than single-shot EPI DWI sequence. In conclusion, Resolved DWI, which is a type, type of multi-shot DWI, is an improved EPI sequence with significantly low uh, skull-based artifacts, exceptional resolution, and which can be used effectively in diagnosing Tumor with high accuracy. So these were the references which were help, help, helpful in my study. Thank you.